My name is Mark Sheridan. I live in Vernon Bridge, and I had the heat pump installed in April of 2023. But it's very easy to apply. The online application was fairly straightforward. And then maybe eight or nine months before I got approved and the pump actually got installed, well, the heat pump essentially comprised of two units. There's the split head that is inside the house that takes the heat generated from the outside unit, which draws heat from the air, and pipes it through some pipes and up and comes out through the head into the house. So it's a air heat exchanger, I guess how you'd call it, much like a refrigerator. It's, yeah, it heats and cools, so it's a double function unit. The prices continually keep going up for oil, so um, I wanted to explore different energy alternatives, and it's, it's an efficient uh, method of drawing heat that's essentially free from the air and heating your house with it. So it made a lot of energy sense and dollar sense as well. It also reduces the CO2 output uh, into the atmosphere that the oil produces when it burns, so we're on the right track in trying to remove our reliance on oil. Stephanie Arnold, my pronouns are they, them. I live in North Rustico and I do research and work in climate change and adaptation. Yeah, a lot of the climate change risk and impacts that we've talked about for a really long time are things that are related to the coast. So we've talked a long time about sea level rise, about coastal flooding and coastal erosion. But in recent times, we've also talked about things that are happening to the land. And so a lot more conversations around, let's say, extended drought periods or too much rain for things like agriculture, the extra heat that impacts uh, public health and invasive species. There's very few things you can find on PEI that won't be affected or isn't already affected by climate change. Hurricane Fiona was the biggest storm in Canadian history. It was a tipping point in terms of how we look at climate change and how we experience climate change and what kind of things we can do and we should do moving forward. Everyone's affected by climate impacts locally and the interesting thing about that conversation is how because we each experience climate change so differently. So we're talking about heat stress. Uh, there's certain folks that have underlying conditions or maybe taking certain medications that really affect their body's ability to regulate heat. And so those folks will experience uh, heat stress a lot differently than others, even though we're all in the same area. And so it's not a matter of who, maybe it's more of a matter of how. My name's Carla Bernard and I'm the member of the Legislative Assembly for Charlottetown Victoria Park and the interim leader of the third party and I'm from Charlottetown Prince Edward Island. I've seen a lot of uptake with the heat pump program in my riding. I hear from people all the time that they're getting heat pumps. Actually just the other day the neighbor across the street was telling me about it. So I think that the uptake absolutely has been phenomenal. So energy poverty is having a huge impact on islanders and we often hear increasing stories of people not being able to fill their oil tanks or not being able to put gas in their car. And so programs like a free heat pump program help kind of free up some of that, that money that they would normally be spending on, on fossil fuels to heat their home. It, it helps islanders or, or people who can't afford these changes make them and it also helps people be a part of that to, to see, okay, well, this is a collective movement and, and what I do does matter. And that's a very clear message when you, when you offer programs such as a heat pump program where, you know, not everyone may have access to that. Well, I think that if you leave it up to, to individuals, we just won't get there. You know, it's expensive, and so a lot of islanders just don't have the means or resources to, to do all of the things that we know that we need to do to get to where we need to be. So um, it's, it's really something that we have to do together. It's not the, the answer, it's not the end-all be-all, but it is definitely an important tool that we have in the toolbox as we transition off of fossil fuels. It's about making life more affordable and it's also about making things more accessible. I can tell you that uh, I was spending about 1900 to 2000 in oil in a year. And well, you drop that down to almost zero because I'm hardly using any. What I have in the tank there will likely last me another 10 or 15 years. Yeah, I, th I think it's a money saver for pretty much anyone that puts one in. Well, because the price is right, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a great deal. And they're efficient units and, and, you know, 
I can't see any reason, I can't see any downsides to them. So why not take advantage of it? Any place should try and adopt a program like this because it, it will provide benefits in some way, shape or form. Being able to have the upfront cost looked after, whether it's lowered or removed completely, is certainly going to help because sometimes making the decision to put into heat pump has a lot to do with the cost benefit. Like if you put in this money ahead of time, you realize the savings over time. But for low income islanders and households, it's very difficult to even come up with that initial uh, upfront cost. So having programs like that will certainly remove that barrier. Programs like this are really, really important, but they don't stand on their own. And so what else can we be doing to support that? When it comes to climate policy, if it isn't also addressing community well-being, individual well-being, environmental well-being, then I would argue that that climate policy is lacking. I see climate action really as the impetus and the tipping point of a better, brighter future. I'm a pessimistic person by nature, but I'm stubbornly optimistic about PEI and climate action and PEI because over the last few years, there's been so many voices in it now. There are folks working in mental health. There are folks that are supporting immigration and temporary foreign workers. There are folks that are supporting youth and children and so many more groups working together to figure out what is a way to build collective resilience. And that's what really gets me up every day.